country is not a country without controlling its borders. And you'll never do that with an activist foreign court in Strasbourg, which, remember, stopped that plane taking off to Rwanda back in 2022. We are clear that is the first step. So let's talk about the political side of things. Nigel Farage emerged from his holiday in Clacton today. He was on the seaside and hit back in an interview with his employers at GB News. I've heard it all before. Pretty Patel said all the same things. If you employ illegal migrant workers, we'll fine you. You may go to prison. Massive penalties for smugglers. Life imprisonment. None of it. And you could put a thousand new enforcement officers in place. But if the European Court of Human Rights stops you deporting people, what difference does it make? are very clear that a country is not a country without controlling its borders. And you'll never do that with an activist foreign court in Strasbourg, which, remember, stopped that plane taking off to Rwanda back in 2022. We are clear that is the first step. And it is a very clear first step. Andrew, a first step that none of the leadership contenders for the Conservative Party have been prepared to make. And as a result, yeah. I'm not prepared to support them anymore. You know, Suella Braverman was the, the one person who said, absolutely, we need to stand on a strong position of, EC of leaving the ECHR. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. She didn't run because she knew she didn't have the support from the MPs. And as a result, I can't support any of these leadership contenders. Uh, and, and you're absolutely right, Dan, as always. And, and there were a number of issues which were silent or not discussed in the election. Um, the COVID, for example, no, nobody looked at all the horrendous things that went on there. And yeah, let's just pretend happened. it didn't happen. Exactly. Well, I know, but but isn't that bizarre? So nobody was talking about it on any side of the parties. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right about this. If you look at what was the problem about the, the flights, they were just about to take off and the ECHR said, oh, no, you can't do that. And off they all came again. It, it's an absolute nonsense. We then also had the nonsense about Rwanda. We had the Rwanda safety bill. And Abraham Lincoln, who used to uh, amuse people at dinner parties, I was up to date with my jokes. Uh, and what he used to say, he used to say, well, uh, if, it, if you call the tail of a dog a leg, how many legs does a dog have? And people thought, well, well, five then. Well, no, the answer is still four, because just because you call a tail a leg doesn't make it so. So calling <laughs> Rwanda a safe country is an absolute nonsense. So we need to look at that. And you're right, we need something like Nigel to call it out yeah indeed i mean look charlie there's so much that can be done there has to be a deterrent there does i'm a big believer in that but i also believe that there can be a turn back policy as well plus let's leave the echr there are so many things that can be done but there has to be political will to do them and in australia where they have completely protected borders there was political will and guess what charlie the boats stopped the illegal immigration stopped I mean, if, if there is a law implemented here where we could actually break the law and be sent to Australia, I may consider breaking the law just to get out of this country. Um, but when it comes to the pushback with the dinghies coming over here and the illegals coming over here to the UK, there is a simple solution. It, it's very cost effective and it's very cheap. Just take the boats back into French waters because the reason why we're bringing them to the UK in the middle of the channel is because we are, I suppose, duty bound to protect people who are in danger of dying at sea. And it's they're in our territorial waters. So I suppose we have to do that. But why can't we do what the French do and just escort them back over the line? Because we've seen the French boats doing it. We're not causing a massive problem with France. We're actually paying them money to do what they're not actually doing, which is stopping them coming over in the first place. So why don't we just do the same? Get Take our money back. Bring, bring the dinghies into French waters. The French aren't going to start a war over it. They're not going to cut off trade with us over it because it's not worth it, over a few immigrants on a, on a few boats. So let's just do that. What's the worst that could happen? The French get annoyed. Who cares? Well, what, one of the things, can, can I just, Please, can I just say one, one thing? Um, the, the reality is this, however, the focus should be on those criminal gangs because they are the ones as well who are abusing the system. Those are the ones who are getting fortunes out of other people's misery. And it's going to be a two-pronged attack. Firstly, we've got to send a very clear message to everybody that you can't, if you come here illegally, you're going to be sent back. Uh, so don't bother even trying. Save your money. 
And then secondly, we need to target those criminal gangs who are abusing people, as they say, it's, it's uh, bribery and, and going as far as murder. Do go and watch that movie, Io Capitano. It's based on real events. Uh, it's not an entirely true story, but it is based on real events as we understand it. And it gives a different perspective. That's what we need to look at, those two-pronged attacks, one on communication and the other targeting the gangs. Now, the big question is, can Reform UK end up in government by 2029? I say yes. I believe, and some of you will call me crazy, but you can hold me to this. I believe Nigel Farage will be Prime Minister of the UK by 2029. And at that point, Marine Le Pen will be President of France as well, because there is so much discontent in both countries. But we know Reform UK really has to build up its operation. It has been a very small party and it's going to have to get professional. Well, today, Zia Youssef, the new chairman of the party, who admitted that he has donated £200,000 of his own money into the cause, says that he does believe they can be in government by 2029. Watch. Finally, the goal is to beat the Tories in 2028, 2029. Our goal is to be the party of government in 2029, which means beating Labour. And that's possible from this low start, five MPs, 75,000 uh, members, you can do that? I built quite a successful uh, and sophisticated technology company. I'm quite good with data. Okay. I have spent weeks and weeks and weeks poring over the data. We have a clear part of victory. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's long odds, right? Saving the country generally is quite a difficult uh, endeavor. It's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be very tough, but it's absolutely possible and we're gonna do it. But what about those criticisms from the former, and let's be honest, sacked deputy leader Ben Habib, over democratizing the party so that Nigel Farage doesn't have a stranglehold. Well, Zia Youssef also directed that criticism today. Um, ben Habib, the former deputy leader, uh, he has been critical of Reform UK. Um, he has got no relationship with the leadership anymore, he says. Um, he says that if Reform UK ran the government, it would be owned by Nigel Farage. What he means is that Reform UK is a company and most of the shares are owned by Nigel Farage. How do you change that and will you change that? We will change that. And let me be clear, Nigel Farage and Richard Tice have been on the record multiple times before the election and after the election saying, yes, of course, that will change, right? You know, the history here is that um, if, you, if you know the history, for example, with UKIP, that unfortunately turned into an ungovernable circus, to put it kindly. Um, and so we can only do one thing at a time, Chris. Uh, look, we, of course, understand that uh, members need to be given a democratic um, uh, a set of rights in our constitution. That is what we are working on. Um, you know, that, that constitution, by the way, Chris, is an incredibly important document. You know, we are chartering a course to be the party of government in this country in 2029. Yeah. So that document must be fit for purpose today, for the next year, but also for when we're in government. And that, so we have to get that document right. And will that document, when we see it, allow members to remove the leader, in this case, Nigel Farage? That's what all parties must have, the right for members to remove a leader. Of course it will. How? Well... Uh, when, the, when the Constitution comes out, you know, we have some of the finest legal minds uh, in the country working day and night. And Ben Habib was won over by that. He posted on X, delighted to hear Zia Youssef just now confirming that Nigel Farage will give up his controlling interest in Reform UK Limited and that members will be able to vote to remove and appoint a leader. When this is done, it will be a proper political party. Charlie, are you satisfied with this? I think it's a step in the right direction. I used to be a chairman, an area chairman for the Conservative Party, so I understand the ins and outs of a democratised local area. Um, it is important that you have that because it gets people involved, it gets them invested and activists and, and potential councillors and MPs actually feel like they've got skin in the game as opposed to just being dictated to by a monarchical figure like Nigel Farage, who at the moment controls everything. So it is a step in the right direction. Hopefully it encourages people to join reform and get involved in politics. And I think if even if you're not a reform voter or supporter, you should get involved in politics in some way if you can. Andrew Eborn, how do you feel about this massive shake-up of I, Reform UK? I, I, I think it's fascinating. I, I know a lot of the key people in Reform. I, David Bull, who was also a, a deputy leader, he set the whole thing up with Richard Tyson. We used to share a studio very often uh, and talk about these things. It was done with their own money to get it all started. Uh, yes, they have talked about how they're going to reform it from a corporate point of view. What I find astonishing, though, Dan, is when you look at the actual statistics, because whilst the Labour Party won 33.7% of the vote in the last election, the Conservative 23.7%, the Liberal 
Liberal Dems got 12.2%. They got 72 seats. That's 72 seats. What happened with Reform, who got 14.3% of the vote, much more than the Liberal Dems, they ended up with five. That doesn't sound right for democracy, does it? No, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And again, I know a lot of people do not support it because they have brought into the left wing propaganda but let me tell you we need proportional representation in this yeah. country but that is a debate for another day first what's so important about being independent is that i only tell you about products that i personally use one of them is verso i've entered my 40s the importance of staying healthy as i age has become really critical to me so I've done a few things, actually. I'm doing the 16-8 fast, exercising most days, but I've learned that will only get me so far. Scientists like David Sinclair have proven that we can now reverse aging with interventions that go beyond healthy habits. So for me, I was looking for a product that would enhance everything I was already doing, but also one that was backed up by solid evidence. So that's why I use Verso's Cell Being product. It's really brilliant, actually. It has scientifically proven ingredients that fight the effects of aging by increasing NAD plus levels that power every cell in your body. For me, I take it at the start of every day. I've used it for a number of months. It's made fasting a lot easier. I've lost fat. I'm eating less too. And a lot of that is down to its blood sugar regulating effects, which lead to fewer cravings. I'm even sleeping better, actually. So I really recommend Verso, and I'd love you to experience the same thing. Remember, it publishes third-party testing from each batch produced two to guarantee you are getting what you paid for. And I'm delighted to say that because Verso was my first ever sponsor on Outspoken, please do support them as a result. Today, if you go to buy.ver.so forward slash Outspoken, you will save 15% on your first order. You just have to remember to use the coupon code Outspoken when you check out. Uh, the website address, I've put it in our YouTube and Rumble description, but I will repeat it now. buy.ver.so forward slash Outspoken. Use the coupon code Outspoken. Jim Davidson, my friend Jim. Hey. Now, there's been lots of rumours about Jim joining Reform UK because he was pictured at this event with Lee Anderson and Richard Tice while on his own platform, Ustream. He has now responded. Watch. Guess who's sitting in the front row up in Skegness when I'm doing my show? This lot. Yes, what a picture. A Tory sandwich. Lee Anderson and Richard Tice, two great mates of mine, they used to, and are now, now the, the big wigs in reform. And I'll be sitting and chatting with them and talking to them. And I like some of their policies, but I'm a conservative, for good or bad. You know, cut my head off and it says Tory all the way through. But what the Tory party has got to have is these two guys in it. Yes, wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it? If the reform party suddenly, can't you just go and take over another party like buying a company? Uh, we're the reform uh, company. We want to buy you lot. Yeah, OK, a few quid each in the back pocket. Well, Richie's always got billions anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But this is what I'm on about. These are great guys, great guys and great mates. And no, I've not joined uh, the reform party, reform UK party. But, but, but I do believe in a lot of their policies. And these are great blokes. And it just seems to me that we could do with these guys in the Conservative Party. Wouldn't that be a lot easier if reform joined uh, the Labour Party and started to, you know, they say it's easier to be inside the tent pissing out than outside pissing in. Well, it would be great to see the Conservative Party have some of, uh, maybe all of uh, reform's policies and have a couple of people in there with balls. There, I've... See, Charlie, I love Jim, but I think he's been naive here because that ship has sailed, hasn't it? There isn't going to be a merge because the Tory rhetoric since the election has not been at all welcoming to Nigel. No, not at all. I mean, I watched that video earlier on today and the first thing that came to mind was that people like Jim Davidson are going to be a problem in the, in the future because not him personally, but people that are conservative through and through, like he just said he is, because other people will vote like that until the day they die. And that's the wrong approach. There needs to be a change. And the biggest challenge for reform now is actually going to be to convert those died in the wall blue Tories to jump over and, and you know, put their ex in the turquoise box and vote for reform. Um, I, I like Jim a lot. I think he's hilarious. He's, he's, a, he's a wonderful comedian. My family adore him as a comedian. But on this one, I think he's probably a 
bit more wishful uh, that he is realistic. Wishful thinking. It is interesting though, isn't it, Andrew? Because I think Charlie's right. It is going to take getting someone like Jim Davidson voting for yeah. reform, for Reform UK to enter government. No, you're absolutely right. And Jim is brilliant and he's been cancelled and suffered from, the, from the, yeah. that sort of side and set up his own thing. Uh, so he's Which I love. I love like. you, Street. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely. Promote Jim whenever we can. Uh, and, and the other interesting character is Charlie Mullins, who, again, you would think he was oh, sort yeah. of through and through conservatives, but he went over, uh, and I've, I've chatted yeah. to Charlie many times about that, he went over to uh, reform. And I think if you look at that sort of side, it was George Galloway uh, who always said that, well, political parties, nothing between their two cheeks of the same backside. <laughs> And if you look, you look at the policies of each one. I think this is what's going to happen: is it's going to be the mergers. We start focusing more on the policies. What bits do we really care about, and who are the experts who are going to reform it? But I wouldn't rule out completely reform and the Tories getting together because uh, political uh, shenanigans um, do go on behind the scenes, and they realise yeah. if you've got to be a, a kingmaker, you sometimes have to hold your nose and uh, and yeah. vote accordingly, or potentially some sort of electoral deal where yeah. they would maybe the Conservatives would stand down in the red wall seats, for example, yes. if they don't have a chance, but reform will have a chance. I think a lot of it is going to depend on who's elected Tory leader and also the polling as, as we get up to the next election. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wharton Outspoken. Please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that. Plus, if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show, then visit www.outspoken.live.